So you want to get into Dead by Daylight, do you? Well, that's terrific. Did you want to main Survivor or Killer? Survivor? Well, here's your box of introductory cosmetics, some blood points, entrance on the left. Happy escaping in there. Now that that's taken care of, Killer Man, it's that time again. Another licensed killer with perks that may or may not be meta. Pay up. I'm only slightly exaggerating. The game is really expensive if you want, like, everything that actually affects gameplay. Lots of people are out here making how to start Dead by Daylight videos, but they usually only cover, like, what characters are good or what's meta, but they ignore how much everything costs in, like, actual money. So for this video, I'm going to break down exactly how much you can expect to spend if you want to play Dead by Daylight regularly. Here are some guidelines, though, for the video anyway. First off, I'm listing everything in US dollars. It's the currency I use, and it's the one that's extremely popular among my audience, so I, you know, you can convert. Secondly, this video is going up at the very start of 2023, so things are bound to change. However, you can still expect these prices to be the bare minimum. The game isn't getting any cheaper. Thirdly, I'll also be referring to the digital storefront a lot. This is Steam for me, but the things I say will apply to PSN, Xbox, anywhere you buy your games or DLC. So with that, I'm Biz, and I'm here to talk to you about the real cost of Dead by Daylight. Hey y'all, so as I was writing the script for this video, I found out that, like, Mint Skulls, another Dead by Daylight YouTuber, did this, only he did it way more in-depth. Uh, his video is 50 minutes long and designed for, like, Dead by Daylight veterans who are, like, caught up in community drama, and if you want all the stuff I'm gonna talk about here, but with way more detail, go watch his video. This video, I think, is still valid and worth producing, because it's way shorter and made for people who are thinking about getting into Dead by Daylight, so still stick around, but if you want way more detail about why the way behavior is doing things is kind of horrible, go watch his also. Watch us both. Watch them side by side. Tell him I sent you, please. I want his clout. Please, engagement, engagement, engagement. At the very least, anyone interested in buying Dead by Daylight should grab the Ultimate Edition on sale. This version of the game is the game itself and the first five years of unlicensed characters. So you won't see Freddy or Nemesis, but you'll have tons of characters to play with whether you want to play Killer or Survivor. At the time of recording this, the Ultimate Edition is on sale for $37.38. Probably the lowest you'll ever see it, barring a giveaway on Game Pass or Epic. Never pay full price for this game. I'd even suggest going to one of those evil gray market key sellers before full price, as the full price for Ultimate Edition is $80, and that doesn't cover the latest DLC or even the most critical DLC if you're playing Killer. So, okay, this may seem like a weird tangent here, but I assure you it'll make sense. Many years ago, Wizards of the Coast did a ton of research into Magic the Gathering player types. Of these, one type always stuck out with me, and that was the Timmy or Tammy type. This type likes big plays, big spells, and loves to play a game with their friends more than anything else. If you're a Tammy, Dead by Daylight is not going to break your bank. If you're a social player and just want to run Survivor and play with your friends, you're set at this point. Ultimate Edition gives you tons of survivors. The only extra you may want to buy is some survivor that has a perk that's meta, and your friends will probably tell you what that is. I'll tell you right now, you can't go wrong with Michaela. And since she's unlicensed, you might even be able to get her with in-game currency instead of cash by the time you want her. Yeah, I guess I should explain that. Dead by Daylight has three big currencies that matter. Blood points, which are used to level up characters, and you get these just for playing. Iridescent shards, which you use to buy perks from the shrine or unlicensed characters you don't have. Always save these for characters. Unless you see a perk in the shrine you really, really want and don't want to spend cash on the character for. See, if you have the character, you can level them up, and then their perks can be transferred onto any other character. Which means, yeah, the game does have certain pay-to-win elements because of the third currency, Oryx Cells. They can only be bought with real-world cash and are the easiest way to get licensed characters. Whether you use cells or just buy the DLC outright in the digital storefront, it'll cost the same. Only difference is if you want just one character or both characters to come with the DLC, as the storefront purchase usually also comes with, like, an in-game charm that you can wear. Sorry if that was overwhelming. The short version is, if you just want to play Survivor with your friends, I suggest buying Ultimate Edition and being happy with it. If you definitely never ever want to play Killer, just buy Dead by Daylight Vanilla and the Survivor Pack for a grand total of $24. But you never know though, what if? So I very highly recommend grabbing Ultimate Edition. On to suffering!
if you're interested in playing Killer at all, after you buy Ultimate Edition, you will want to buy the Leatherface DLC. Leatherface is not a very good killer, but he has a perk called Barbecue and Chili. This perk makes it so that whenever you put a survivor on a hook, you functionally have wall hacks on the survivor team for 4 seconds. This perk is generally really good and great for learning the game, as it helps you learn survivor behavior faster. I recommend grabbing things on sale whenever possible. So while Leatherface goes for $5 usually, during sales he also goes for $5. Yeah, Behavior knows how good this perk is and prices him accordingly. A quick update, um, I thought I was a little harsh here, so I went ahead and price checked all the content through SteamDB. And it turns out this most recent sale is the only time that Leatherface was not on sale when everything else was. So, I don't think this is actually a matter of them pricing based on meta, and rather is just them pricing because of hype for the Texas Chainsaw video game. I, I don't know, that seems crazy to me, but... I, I don't know. That Shrine of Secrets thing I mentioned before, I know I said to save shards for buying characters, but it changes every week. If you ever see barbecue in there, buy it and never look back. Having barbecue without buying Leatherface is a sign of nobility, an untainted bloodline. His other perk, Franklin's, is also pretty good, but not, not as important. To go back to that Magic the Gathering study, they found two other player types of note. Jenny, or Johnny, who loves complex and creative plays, and Spike, who just wants to win. If you're either of these types, you'll be in hell! See, because every few months, a new batch of characters comes out, and for a brief time, one of their perks becomes meta. So if you're Spike, you have to buy it. And if you're Jenny, you'll have to buy the character to buy that perk. So you'll need everything. So how much does everything cost? Well, it all costs way more than clicking all the buttons under my channel, which you should do so I can keep making informative content like Let's assume you buy everything on sale, and let's also assume you play the game enough to have enough shards to buy unlicensed characters, like you won't have to spend a penny on them. Let's also assume you just don't care about cosmetics at all, okay? Let's also just ignore the Shrine of Secrets, because it's totally random anyway, we can't, you know, make a plan based on that. So the bare minimum you'd have to spend for every gameplay modification is... $37 for Ultimate Edition, $5 for Leatherface, $3.50 for Michael, $3.50 for Freddy, $3.50 for Jigsaw, $2.50 for Ghostface, $3.50 for Silent Hill, $3.50 for Resident Evil, $2.50 for Hellraiser, $4.20 for The Ring, $9.60 for Resident Evil, again, Wesker, $2.50 for Evil Dead. The final cost of every bit of licensed content as of January 2023 is $81.10. Unless I'm forgetting something... Oh yeah! Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare! So, Behavior, the company behind Dead by Daylight, had some negotiation fall through with Netflix over the Stranger Things license. As a result, the Stranger Things DLC can no longer be purchased. If you want the perks, no problem. They made those generic perks, so they're always just available for everyone. But the killer Demogorgon is kind of fun, and if you're a crazy person, you might need him. So the only way to get him now is through kind of evil gray market key resellers who sell them for uh, $50. So the true cost of everything in Dead by Daylight is $131.10, give or take. Because you'll probably want to buy insurance from whatever key reseller you use, and if you get it really bad, you'll have to buy Demogorgon again because the key gets, you know, it's a bad key or something. <laughs> but that's the burden us horror fans have to carry, don't we? Our homes always tend to have a bunch of garbage on VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray just piling up. A replica of our favorite killer's iconic weapon somewhere. Fake blood, just for fun. We're gonna spend money on garbage, it may as well be fun garbage. So, Dead by Daylight might just be the latest form of fun goofy scams, like a witch doctor's head shrinking kit you find in the back of a magazine. Scams, we know are scams, but we're such hopeless marks we can't help but go in on them. No, I'm just playing. Hey, Behavior, do you want me to recommend your game to people under any condition other than Yeah, it's my favorite game. Uh, buy it on sale, maybe. How about you make the base game free? Most of your players got here on Game Pass or Epic Giveaways anyway. You battle pass like the game is free, so just do it. Also, just make a new killer who plays just like Demogorgon so the FOMO of his existence doesn't make people ignore your game outright. Also, Mint Skull's totally right about the shrine just being terrible. Put every perk in there and make like four on sale, but oh no, you can't do that because then nobody will buy the DLC. And man, I'm amazed that that is- Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm having a lot of fun making these silly little video essays and would like to make more. Please support the channel by clicking all the buttons under this video and showing this video to your friends. 
Thank you and have a blessed day.